Okay, sir. Uh, just a minute. Huh? Okay, sir. Just I will introduce sir, and then you can start, sir. Huh? Just I will introduce and then you can start, sir. Uh, just your uh, first. No, I'll I'll give the welcome address now. Huh? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 Very good morning to everyone. And behalf of C. Abdul Hakim College of Engineering and Technology and the Department of Science and Humanities, it's my proud privilege to be extend a very warm welcome to you all to this webinar on cost effective thin film technology for environmental applications. It's a moment of great honor for me to extend a hearty welcome to all of you today. At the outset, I welcome the today resource person, Dr. K. Ravichandran, Associate Professor and Head, PG and Research Department of Physics, AVVM Sri Pushpam College, Pundi, Tanjavur. Your being here is a source of inspiration for us, sir. I also welcome all the participants across the various places in India to this webinar. I hope this session will be very informative to all of us. With these few words, I once again extend a very cordial welcome to one and all. Thank you. I over to Ubaidullah. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. So let me introduce our chief guest today for this today's session. So first of all, I am very happy and proud to introduce our today's chief guest, Dr. K. Ravi Chandran. Associate Professor and Head, Department of Physics, AVVM Sri Pushpam College, Pundi, Tanjavo. He has published nearly 138 research articles in reputed international journals with the cumulative impact factor of 345. And among these publications, 100 articles have been published in SCI Index Journal. Till now, for his publications, he has got Overall citations around 3,000. His H index is 32 and I10 index is 83. He has published 17 papers in collaboration with foreign scientists. He has got nearly 500 projects from different funding agencies like DST, CSIR, UGC, and Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology with the amount around 54 lakhs. He has presented around 162 papers in the state, national, and international level conferences. He has also presented his findings in the international Singapore, Malaysia, and UAE. Totally, he has guided 20 PhD scholars, and among these, 11 scholars have received state level and national level fellowships. He has got two best paper awards for the Journal of Material Science and Technology. Apart from this, in recognition of the significant contribution for the advancement of sciences, he has been elected as fellow of the Academy of Sciences, Chennai. He has delivered 42 invited talks in various colleges. He has organized nearly 22 workshops and conferences. Currently, he is acting as a reviewer for 30 international journals and as an editor for one international journal. Thus, with this short introduction, I am sure, sir, that all the participants, especially the young research birds, will motivate by your work and wish to achieve like you, sir. And it's a great honor to have you here for this webinar. Now, I would like to call upon our chief guest, Dr. K. Ravichandran, to take over this session. Okay, sir. Thank over you. to you, sir. Thank you. Can you see the PowerPoint display? Okay, sir. It's visible, sir. It's visible. Okay, okay. okay. The title page is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, one and all. First of all, I would like to thank the conveners of this webinar, respected Dr. Yusuf Abdul Wahid, Professor and Head, Department of Science and Humanities, the Abdul Hakim College of Engineering and Technology, 
and Mr. Ye Ubaidullah Beg, Assistant Professor of Physics, and my friend, and also the principal, the management, and the authorities of the college for having given me this opportunity to deliver a lecture in this webinar. I feel very much privileged and happy uh, because to be a research person because uh, yesterday Ubaidullah told me that uh, more than 350 participants registered have registered for this uh, webinar. Uh, I feel doubly happy because uh, even from abroad uh, there are some registrations. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for all the participants. Uh, and I once again thank the management and the authorities and the organizing committee of this webinar. The title of this webinar is Cost Effective Telephone Technology for Environmental Applications. Uh, we, we are going to discuss uh, what are thin films, how they are prepared, how they are characterized, what are the applications of thin films, and uh, a detailed uh, discussion on a specific application called photocatalytic dye degradation. Uh, thin films are uh, uh, generally defined as a thin layer of solid material deposited on a solid support called substrate. Uh, in more technical terms, we can define it as a thin layer of material created experimentally by atom by atom or ion by ion or molecule by molecule by a condensed process. Uh, similarly, the deposition process, thin film deposition process can be defined as random nucleation and the growth of condensing species on a substrate. Thin films are ranging from, uh, the thickness of the thin films are ranging from a fraction of a nanometer to a few micrometers. Depending on the thickness of thin films, they can be classified into ultra thin films, thin films and thick films. If the thickness lies between 50 to 100 angstrom units or 5 to 10 nanometer, they are called ultra thin films. And when the thickness lies between 10 to 100 nanometer, they are called thin films. The films with a greater than 100 nanometer thickness are called thick films. In the, during the deposition process, the thin films are grown through several stages, approximately six stages. Uh, they are called nucleation stage, island stage, coalescent stage, channel, holes, and continuous film stage. First, when atoms or molecules or ions are reached on the surface of the substrate, a nucleation, nucleation occurs, that is, uh, some nuclei are randomly formed on the surface of the substrate. Then, on the arrival of subsequent atoms or ions or molecules, the nuclei grow, grow gradually into a larger size. Uh, they are called islands and that stage is called island stage. Then on the arrival of further uh, species, uh, the islands grow laterally as well as vertically. Laterally means the surface of the film increases. Vertically means the thickness of the film increases gradually. Uh, then uh, finally we can get a uniform uh, thin, continuous thin film uh, when the, the process goes through the channel and the whole stages. Uh, thin films, thin film technology finds applications in a wide variety of fields. For example, uh, in optics, uh, selective absorber coatings, um, Reflective and anti-reflection coatings, interference filters are deposited using thin film technology. Uh, in electronic and optoelectronic uh, uh, device uh, manufacturing industries, uh, this thin film uh, technology plays a vital role, a crucial role uh, in uh, fabricating uh, many uh, 
active and passive devices like uh, resistors, capacitors, diodes, transistors, FETs, MOSFETs, um, transparent electrodes, uh, solar cells, and even uh, light emitting diodes. Uh, they are also, the different technology is used in uh, depositing anti-corrosion or corrosion resistant coatings and anti-erosion and wear resistant uh, coatings. Uh, they are also used in spintronic devices uh, and uh, even in uh, decorative, uh, ornamental decorative coatings. This is the anti-reflection coating in uh, spectacles. A thin film solar cells are generally called second generation solar cells. In uh, thin film solar cells, an n-type layer, a p-type layer, and a window layer called a transparent conducting electrode window layer are deposited using thin film technology. Uh, in industries, anti-corrosion and anti-wear coatings are used uh, in various uh, spares and uh, equipments. Uh, transparent conducting oxide films uh, like zinc oxide, tin oxide, indium tin oxide uh, are used as defrosting window layers. Uh, they are transparent, they are optically transparent and electrically conducting. They are optically transparent as well as electrically conducting. Therefore, when a small current is allowed to pass through these window layers deposited on glass windows of buildings or cars, uh, heat energy is produced due to this heat effect and therefore, and thereby uh, the defrosting occurs. They are also used as anti-repellent uh, repellent coatings, uh, defogging in aircraft, Another important application, we are going to discuss it uh, in detail at the end of this lecture, uh, photocatalytic thin films. Uh, the effluents discharged from textile, paper and uh, leather industries uh, consist of a lot of toxic organic uh, dyes, dye molecules. Uh, they are, which are very, very much toxic to human being, not only human being, but also all living beings as well as uh, the fertile lambs. Um, even though there are several methods, photocatalytic is a potential method for the degradation of decomposition of uh, these uh, dyes. Uh, these photocatalytic thin films can be act as a potential candidates. The photocatalytic materials like uh, titanium oxide and zinc oxide uh, can be used as potential candidates uh, for the purification of uh, water contaminated by these effluents discharged from uh, textile industries. The, the general mechanism behind the photocatalysis is when light is, when light of sufficient energy is incident on a photocatalytic material placed inside, immersed inside here, uh, contaminated water containing uh, toxic dye molecules. The photocatalysis reaction occurs. Uh, therefore, uh, electron fold pairs are generated from the uh, photo semiconductor photocatalyst. These photo generated electron fold pairs further produce uh, the hydroxyl radicals, superoxide oxide anions, and uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, they are called. Uh, uh, reactive oxygen species, uh, they, uh, these reactive oxygen species consequently degrade the molecules, dye, toxic dye molecules into uh, non-toxic H2O and CO2. Uh, uh, as a final result, non-toxic products, uh, water and uh, CO2 are produced in this uh, photocatalyst reaction. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, this application, this environmental application at the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, thin films can be fabricated by various methods. They are broadly classified into uh, two types. They are broadly classified into two types. Uh, they are physical and chemical methods. 
the physical methods are further divided into sputtering and the evaporation uh, in evaporation there are several variants uh, dc sputtering or sputtering magnetron sputtering and iron beam sputtering in the case of eva evaporation also there are several variants a uh, resistive heating evaporation flash evaporation electron beam evaporation and uh, pulse laser deposition uh, the chemical methods are uh, further classified into two types based on the uh, state of the starting or precursor material uh, uh, that way they are classified into gas phase and liquid phase uh, in the case of liquid phase there are some uh, important methods we are going to discuss chemical bath deposition a uh, silar successive ionic layer adsorption and reaction reaction technique and spray pyrolysis technique uh, this is the one of the important physical method called the sputtering uh, in this uh, technique Uh, is it visible no sir you need to share you need to share Oh, it's okay. Okay, sir. Make it as a full screen. Okay. Okay, sir. Visible. I'm going for a pointer. Yes. Uh, in this sputtering technique, the apparatus consists of a vacuum chamber, uh, which is highly evacuated using uh, vacuum pumps like oil pumps and rotary uh, pumps. Uh, the source material to be deposited uh, as a thin film on the substrate is placed, mounted as a target at the top of the chamber. and the substrate on which the film is to be deposited is placed at the bottom of the uh, vacuum tube uh, I, in the high vacuum yeah, inert gas like freon or argon is allowed to pass through the chamber uh, when high voltage a very high voltage of nearly 50000 volts is applied between the uh, positive and negative players uh, then plasma occurs and the positive ions of freon or uh, freon or argon gas uh, then moves rush into the uh, rush to the top of the uh, chamber with very high kinetic energy and collide or bombard with the target and that way the atoms of the target are released and descend towards the substrate uh, due to the gravity of of its own weight Uh, and deposited or condensed on the substrate therefore uh, fast energy or, or, or high energy uh, positive ions moves towards the target and due to the kinetic energy transfer between the positive ions and the uh, target atoms the atoms are uh, liberated or removed from the target and descend towards the substrate and deposited and finally we get uh, Uh, good quality thin films uh, this is one of the common uh, physical methods then this is uh, resistive heating thermal evaporation or thermal evaporation or vacuum evaporation technique in this technique the source is placed at the bottom in the previous case the source the target is placed at the top and the substrate is placed at the bottom as in this case the source is placed at the bottom and the substrate is mounted at the top uh, on a substrate holder uh, 
uh, when the source is uh, uh, heated, when we have a high heat energy is applied uh, to the source material, if the source material is evaporated and the evaporated species uh, move towards the target to the substrate and deposited as a This is another variant of thermal evaporation or vacuum evaporation. Uh, there is only one difference. All the other components are the same. The vacuum chamber, the substrate, substrate holder, uh, crucible, and the source material all are same. But only one difference is the source of heating. In the previous case, the source of heating is resistive heating. Here we use electron beam to electron beam to evaporate the source material. The electron beams are focused on the source material by means of some magnetic uh, field arrangements, magnetic oil arrangements. And therefore, this method is called the electron beam evaporation. Then uh, another uh, variant of this vacuum evaporation is pulsed laser deposition. In this case, uh, in the place of electron, uh, electron source, electron gun or resistive heating, we use laser gun. A pulsed laser is pointed towards, focused towards the source material and uh, thereby the source material is evaporated and deposited on the substrate. Uh, the, all the previous cases are physical methods. Uh, here this is a chemical bath deposition uh, technique, one of the very simple uh, chemical methods. Uh, the cost of a sputtering unit is nearly 1 crore and uh, vacuum and uh, thermal evaporation techniques uh, units are uh, nearly 50 to 60 lakhs or uh, up to 1 crore. But we can construct a, a low cost homemade uh, chemical bath deposition unit uh, with, the, with uh, less than 10,000 rupees. Uh, it consists of a magnetic uh, stirrer with a hot plate, a temperature controlled system with a sensor, two beakers of different sizes, different diameters. The outer one is the water bath, uh, consists of uh, 90 degree temperature water. The inner one is the solution bath, in which the uh, substrates are suspended, are mounted, suspended from the uh, from a system arrangement which, uh, which is made up of some Teflon or inert uh, materials. Uh, due to the chemical reaction, thin films are deposited, thin film material is coated on the substrate after uh, even 20 or 30 minutes. This is called chemical deposition technique, chemical bath technique. Using this uh, chemical bath technique, uh, we have published uh, several papers. This is one of the uh, papers published in reputed journals using this technique. Photovoltaic properties of nanocrystalline CDS films deposited using uh, CBD technique. This is another variant of chemical bath deposition technique. This technique consists of four, four beakers. First one contains the cationic solution. For example, uh, to deposit cadmium sulfide uh, thin films, we have to uh, place cadmium chloride or cadmium acetate solution in the first beaker. The second beaker is uh, filled with uh, deionized water, distilled water. Then the third one is the uh, beaker for ionic solution, anionic solution. Uh, in the case of cadmium sulfide, thiorea solution is placed here, which consists of uh, S2 minus ions. Uh, this is again water bath, deionized water bath. First, the substrate is dipped or immersed into the first beaker. Then CD2 plus ions from the precursor solution, starting solution, are picked up by the substrate. And then after that, it is dipped in the second water bath. Then the loosely bound CD2 plus ions are removed or eliminated from the surface and only the strongly sticked uh, cadmium 2 plus ions only survive after this dipping. Uh, then uh, the substrate is dipped in the anionic solution. 
uh, where the S2 minus ions are picked up by the, the substrate. Uh, they are picked up due to the uh, positive ion nature of uh, CD cadmium ions. Uh, then it is uh, dipped in uh, immersed in another water bath, which removes the loosely bound serious compound molecules. Uh, the, these four dippings constitute uh, one cycle. Uh, we can continue the cycle repeatedly uh, until the required thickness is reached. Therefore, the number of dippings uh, determines the uh, thickness of the films uh, along with several other uh, process parameters. Uh, we modified this uh, SILAR technique. Uh, this is called modified or improved SILAR technique designed and developed in our laboratory by our research team. Uh, we modified the technique using uh, four arms and four substrates. We can, using this te technique, we can uh, deposit four thin films at a time simultaneously. Uh, there is a microcontroller based uh, system. It is a micro microcontroller based system. Uh, all the four substrates are simultaneously dipped into the uh, beakers. This is deionized water, this is cationic solution, this is deionized water, this is anionic solution. And therefore, we can get four substrates uh, the, coated with the thin films at the same time. Then characterization. After depositing uh, any thin film, we have to uh, study the characteris characteristics. Uh, for first, uh, the structural characteristics are generally studied using uh, X-ray diffraction technique. X-ray diffraction technique is an important technique uh, for the elemental identification. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, X-ray diffraction pattern is called the fingerprint of any material. By studying or observing the X-ray diffraction pattern, we can identify the element deposited as a Therefore, this is, uh, using this method, we can uh, calculate uh, the lattice constants. We can find the uh, uh, crystal structure, lattice constants. We can calculate the uh, crystallized size using Scherer formula. Uh, we can calculate the uh, uh, number of unit uh, cells, number of cells uh, per unit volume, and the volume of the unit cell. Uh, we can calculate the strain also strain produced in the thin film also. Therefore, X-ray diffraction technique is an important technique using which we can study the study and calculate the various structural parameters. Uh, this is the uh, UV visible near infrared double beam spectrophotometer, which is used to study the optical properties like the transmittance, absorbs, absorption, and the reflection of uh, thin films deposited by various techniques. This is the trans transmittance graph, transmittance versus wavelength graph, uh, recorded using the UV visible NIR spectrophotometer for the zinc oxide films. And then the surface morphology of the thin films can be studied using scanning electron microscope. Uh, this is the Cell image uh, of a film deposited in our laboratory. For further uh, study on surface morphology and the three dimensional uh, structural properties, uh, we can use transmission electron microscope, TEM. Uh, this is the TEM image of a film. And for compositional analysis, we can use energy dispersive analysis of X ray. X -ray using which we can find the amount of substance, amount of constituent particles in the uh, thin film deposited on a substrate. Uh, these are the papers published in various journals uh, for the thin films deposited using the simple techniques, SILAR, and uh, spray pyrolysis. Uh, this is another simple, low cost, um, user friendly chemical method called the spray pyrolysis technique. 
Pyrolysis means chemical reaction due to high temperature. Hydrolysis, like hydrolysis, electrolysis, this is pyrolysis. Electrolysis means chemical reaction by electric current or charge or voltage. Hydrolysis means chemical reaction by water. Here pyrolysis means chemical reaction by high temperature. Pyro means high temperature. This is, is chemical reaction. This apparatus consists of uh, a spray gun, a solution reservoir, a compressed air container with control valves and uh, pressure dodges, uh, a heating source, a temperature controller with a sensor, uh, this and the other connected accessories. Uh, this spray gun uh, consists of two coaxial thick walled uh, glass tubes of which the inner one is a, a capillary tube. One end of this capillary tube is connected to the solution reservoir and the outer tube is connected to the carrier gas container. When carrier gas is allowed to pass through this tube to the outer tube using the control valves, the air or gas compressed air is rushed into the tube and when it comes this point called nozzle, here both the tubes are fused together to form a nozzle. When the air, compressed air uh, comes at this point, venturi jet effect takes place and thereby the solution is sucked into the, this point and sprayed on the uh, substrate. Uh, the substrate sub, the substrates are maintained at an elevated temperature uh, nearly 400 to 500 degrees centigrade. When the sprayed droplets reach the surface of the substrate, pyrolytic decomposition, that is pyrolytic reaction takes place and thin films are formed on the substrates, surface of the substrates. Uh, by uh, suitably or ap appropriately changing the uh, concentration of the solution, a spray rate, that is the amount of solution sprayed per minute uh, and uh, spray interval, spray total spray time, uh, distance between the nozzle and the substrate, distance between the nozzle and the substrate and temperature of the substrate. Uh, these are the process parameters. By appropriately changing these for process parameters, we can get up time uh, thin films of different characteristics of our drain. Uh, this uh, spray pyrolysis itself is a simple technique, but in our laboratory, we simplified this technique further uh, by replacing by replacing the gun, reservoir, and even compressor and the connected accessories by a simple perfume automation. That is perfume bottle. Perfume bottle. We filled the perfume bottle with the starting solution, precursor solution to be deposited and spray it on the uh, substrate which is uh, at an elevated temperature. Then we get uh, very good uh, quality films uh, compared with, uh, the, uh, with those prepared by conventional methods. Using this simple technique, we have published nearly 25 papers in uh, Science Citation Index Journals. Uh, there are several advantages uh, in these, uh, in these uh, uh, simple uh, techniques. Low cost, comparatively lesser uh, substrate temperature in the case of perfume automizer. No need for carrier gas in the case of uh, perfume automizer. Fine optimization than the conventional technique. Improved wettability between the sprayed microparticles and uh, the positive layers. Uh, using this technique, we have published several papers. Uh, investigation on microstructural and optical properties of serious films fabricated by a low cost simplified, a low cost simplified spray technique using perfume automizer for solar cell applications. Uh, this the impact factor of this paper is uh, more than four. Uh, fabrication of antimony doped tin oxide thin films by an inexpensive simplified spray technique using perfume atomizer. These are the papers. Uh, 
Uh, there is, uh, I have to, I want to share one point uh, with you. Uh, a team of researchers from Germany uh, deposited thin films using this perfume automizer and they produce thin film transistors. Spray pyrolysis of ZNO thin film transistors utilizing a perfume automizer. Adapting our simplified technique, they prepared fabricated thin film transistors uh, using the thin film technology, simple uh, cost effective, cost effective thin film technology. Uh, further, in the 18 references they cited, three of, uh, three of the references are our papers. Three, three of our papers are our papers. Okay, now we are going to discuss a specific application called photocatalytic dye degradation by uh, thin films. Uh, in, uh, in Tamil Nadu, in Karur, Erode, Tirupur, and Koyamathur districts, uh, there are several uh, thousands of uh, textile industries with uh, dyeing units. They discharge uh, tons and tons of tons and tons of effluents every day, every working day, every operating day. And even though there are uh, strict regulations, some uh, small scale and uh, medium scale industries uh, discharge their uh, effluents without any purification or uh, treatment. Uh, they are they, they contaminate the water resources, water sources like the, especially the Noyal River, which covers all the almost all the four districts. Uh, these uh, effluents from the textile industries are uh, highly toxic and consist of organic dye molecules. There are several methods to decontaminate or purify these uh, wastewater effluents. But they are very costly. The operating cost is very, very high due to the power consumption and other operating cost. But photocatalysis is one of the potential method to degrade or decompose or decontaminate these effluents. Um, we, are, we are doing research in this area and we have published nearly 20, 30 papers in photocatalysis and I applied a, a proposal for the decontamination purification of cost effective purification of this uh, textile industrial effluents by a simple method uh, and the project was approved and I and carried out the project and uh, the, uh, the main objective of the project was to fabricate a prototype of cost-effective UV visible operative flexible photocatalytic meshes for the purification of toxic organic dyes discharged from textile industries. Uh, using this project, we have developed a design and developed a specially designed, specially featured uh, spray pyrolysis system and uh, two different photoreactors. And using these apparatus, uh, we have deposited zinc oxide thin films, zinc oxide graphitic carbon nitride, nano composite thin films, graphitic carbon nitride plus molybdenum activated zinc oxide thin films, zinc oxide graphene oxide thin films, uh, Mg plus uh, Mg plus reduced graphene oxide uh, doped ZNO nano composite thin films, Ag plus GO activated ZNO thin uh, and so on. Uh, we study the uh, effect of pH, effect of light intensity, effect of the exposed area, effect of thickness of the film, effect of aperture of the stainless steel mesh. Uh, we have deposited thin films not only on uh, solid glass substrates, uh, we have also deposited thin films on 
stain flexible stainless steel meshes flexible stainless steel meshes uh, this is the uncoated this is the uncoated uh, stainless steel mesh this is the zinc oxide graphitic carbonitrate coated stainless steel mesh uh, we can use this measures coated uh, zinc oxide graphitic carbonitrate material which is a photocatalytic material coated uh, measures uh, for the purification of for the purification of extended effluents discharged uh, from the dye units uh, in the first part of the work we prepared uh, the graphite carbonate, a material, a semiconductor material, also a photocatalyst, uh, having a band gap of nearly 2.2 electron volts, and uh, found that the the efficiency of the photocatalytic efficiency of the material is only 44 percent. Then we add zinc oxide along with the graphite carbonate, and prepared nano composite tools on the stainless steel uh, meshes and the glass plates and we studied the influence of this composite composite on photocatalytic activity and found that the efficiency increases drastically to 98 nearly 98 percent uh, then we add molybdenum along with molybdenum and ag along with this uh, nano composite system and uh, we found that uh, efficiency increases uh, markedly. Uh, these are the uh, meshes, thin film coated meshes with the different magnification cell images. We test the reusability and stability of the thin films deposited on stainless steel meshes, and we found that even after the fourth and fifth trial, the efficiency remains the same, almost the same. Uh, this is one of the papers published under this uh, project. Cost-effective fabrication of zinc oxide gra graphite carbonate composite films for enhanced photocatalytic activity against three different dyes, methylene blue, malachite green, and rhodonine green. When zinc oxide alone is used as a photocatalyst, uh, photocatalytic thin film, the efficiency for methylene blue is only 74, and for malachite green it is only 82, and for rhodamine B it is only 61. But when zinc oxide graphitic carbon nitride nanocomposite film is deposited on the stainless steel mesh, the efficiency increases tremendously to 95, 74 to 95 percent, 82 to 97 percent, and 61 to 73 percent. This is another paper, cost-effective fabrication of graphite carbonate plus MO, molybdenum, added photostable uh, zinc oxide thin films for enhanced visible light response in uh, Actually, zinc oxide is a uh, good photocatalytic material, but because of its wide band gap, uh, it can uh, work as a photocatalyst only under UV light. But we add these uh, graphite carbonated and molybdenum. Uh, the even uh, in the even at the lower energy light, it uh, it is responsive as photocatalyst. Uh, this is the prototype of the uh, photocatalytic uh, dye degradation system designed and developed in our laboratory for this project and we are trying for getting a final uh, question uh, these are the papers published under this project These are our research scholars uh, completed their doctoral degree under this project. Cost-effective fabrication of zinc oxide nanostructures, cost-effective fabrication of graphite carbonate composite thin films, 
and the EAG and the graphitic carbon nitride and the amount of the oxidation of this. Uh, all these researchers are my uh, scholars, PhD scholars. These are my projects. Uh, so far, 100 papers are published in SCA, Science Citation Index in Journals, and 37 more papers are published in SCA Expanded Journals. Thank you. And if for any clarification, you can uh, ask questions through chat or directly. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Audible. Sir. Okay. Okay. Any questions? You can put in the chat box. Any queries? Sorry, if you any queries in the chat box, please read it. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Good morning, sir. Ah, yes. Sir, is the perfume automizer also effective than conventional methods, sir? Perfume automizer? Is the perfume automizer or uh, as much effective than the conventional methods, sir? Yes. It, uh, the thin films uh, is uh, um, regularly asked by several. Uh, uh, participants in several lectures. Mm. The thin films prepared using this simplified technique using perfume automizer is comparable in all the characteristics with with that of their conventional conventionally sprayed counterparts. All the properties, even structural, optical, surface morphological, compositional. Uh, and the magnetic, even magnetic properties are comparable with those obtained by uh, conventional uh, spray pyrolysis method. Uh, I, in, uh, in one of my study, I compare the properties of this. I compare the properties of the films prepared by uh, prepared by spray, uh, simplified spray pyrolysis technique and uh, uh, conventional spray pyrolysis technique and proved that all the properties are almost equal for both the cases. And we already proved that the films prepared using perfume automizer are comparable with that of their conventionally sprayed counterparts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your informative presentation, sir. Sir, another question in YouTube. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, please explain more about how to find out crystal structure mm -hmm. by Scar formula. Scar formula. Yes. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Please uh, read again the question, sir. Please. Sir? 
Sir? She is asking, uh -huh. explain more about how to find out crystal structure uh -huh. by Scherer formula. We can, using the uh, well-known Scherer formula, using the well-known Scherer formula, yes. uh, which is uh, capital T equal to 0 0.9 lambda divided by divided by beta cos theta uh, is only meant for calculating the crystallite size of the system. Crystallite size, not structure, crystallite size. Uh, thin films may be crystalline or amorphous. If it is in crystalline nature, we can calculate the crystallite size in nanometers using the Scherer formula. Uh, to calculate the Scherer formula, we have to take the full width of maximum, full width of maximum of the preferential orientation peak. This is the preferential orientation peak. This is, I, I think, a zinc oxide thin film. The third peak is the preferentially oriented, the highest high intense peak. Uh, we have to find the full width at half maximum, which is called full width at half maximum. That is, uh, if the height of the, the intensity of the peak is 200 or 2000, we have to find the thickness or width, width, width of the peak at the center at 1000, at 1000 intensity. That is beta. Theta is the, uh, this value, the x-axis value. This is two theta, from this we can find the theta. Then uh, lambda is the x-ray, wavelength of the x-ray source used for the x-ray diffraction study. Therefore, by using the wavelength of the x-ray by using the full width at half maximum and the angle, we can calculate the crystallite size of the material. Uh, but we can find the structure of the film using the pattern, using the pattern, x-ray diffraction pattern of the film uh, recorded. Uh, from the, uh, each and every material, each and every material in the universe has its own, uh, own distinct, unique diffraction pattern. Each and every material has unique, distinct diffraction pattern. Uh, they are recorded by various scientists from 1947. Uh, the data is called Joint Committee for Powder Diffraction Standards. From the JCPDS card, we can compare uh, our X-ray diffraction pattern to the database and we can find uh, what element or what material we deposited. By comparing it, the diffraction pattern with the database, we can find the uh, structure of the system. Uh, but from the Scherer formula, we can calculate the crystallite size in nanometers. Okay. Question. Another question, sir. Uh -huh. Please tell the best thin film semiconductor material uh -huh. for photo electrochemical water splitting applications. Uh, yes, titanium oxide is uh, one of the best material for uh, photocatalytic dye degradation as well as photocatalytic uh, splitting, uh, water splitting. Titanium oxide is uh, a costlier material. Therefore, zinc oxide is uh, now taken up by, by researchers all over the world. Zinc oxide is considered as a best cost-effective alternative to the titanium oxide. Therefore, titanium oxide and zinc oxide uh, semiconductor uh, films are, uh, they are called wide band gap semiconductors uh, with the band gap nearly 3.37 and 3.4. Uh, these materials are called uh, photocatalytic semiconductors, they can be used for photocatalytic water splitting. He also has another question, sir. Sandhya Anandha mm -hmm. Kumar. Please tell the best method of thin film deposition. Each and every method has its own merit and demerit. 
for example in the case of uh, sputtering the apparatus cost is very very high but we can get very high quality films in uh, in titan and other watch companies they coat um, they are coating uh, the watch bezels and the strips using this uh, sputtering technique gold coating silver coating are uh, carried out using this technique cost is very high but high quality films can be obtained using this technique moreover any material of your interest any material of your uh, interest can be deposited using this uh, sputtering technique but the price is very cost very costly so it is a sophisticated uh, method but the chemical methods are very simple uh, but relatively uh, they are uh, somehow a little bit uh, lower in quality when compared with the physical methods therefore each and every method uh, it depends uh, if you require a film cost effective film or low cost film for some applications we can go for chemical methods if you require very fine quality exact films then we have to go for some physical methods therefore it depends it depends on the requirement the method uh, the, the method selection depends on the requirement okay next next question sir Umar Sangam has asked for your question. Explain the identification of face and map with JCPDF data. Uh, face and map. Uh, map. Map. Yes. Yes. Map. She has put as map. Yes, ma'am. Face and map. Using JCPDF. Um, yes. Face map. Um, from uh, JCPDF card has. Uh, Uh, yes, yeah, six-digit number. Each and every JCPDS card has a six-digit number. Uh, if we deposit a film and record the X-ray diffraction pattern, we can compare this with the JCPDS card. First, we have to compare the high-intense three peaks. If all the high-intense three peaks, that is here in this case, these three. Are matched with a particular pattern in the record JCPDS card, then we are already identified the element. For example, uh, this is zinc oxide. This is uh, an unknown material. We can compare this first these first peaks with the uh, JCPDS card, and if matches with any uh, material zinc oxide, then it is uh, called a zinc oxide material. Uh, therefore the material identification can be done face is uh, different in the case of zinc oxide it is hexagonal oocy structure sometimes cadmium films has two different faces cubical as well as hexagonal from the xrd patterns we can find which face is uh, in the material uh, either uh, Cubic or hexagonal. From the hexagonal pattern, by comparing it with the already stored data in the JCPDS card, we can find the face of the material, crystalline material face. Okay. Okay. And okay, the last question is that silver or jute? Crystallized size and particle size is same, sir. He is asking. This is a commonly asked question. um who is the researcher asking this question uh, from uh, hey, hey, silver or jute uh, may i know his uh, name and uh, affiliation he has posted only his name sir k silver or jute okay crystallite um uh, in thin films if it in if it is a polycrystalline thin film it consists of several crystallites some of the crystallites combined together to form grains therefore a grain is grain can be can be defined as a superset of 
crystallize. That is, a grain consists of several crystallites, and the crystallites is a crystallites are subset. Crystallite is a subset of grain. Sometimes, a single crystal is formed as a grain. Then the size of the grain is almost equal with, with the crystallite size. But generally, crystallite size is smaller than grain size. From the same image, we can find, for example, uh, from the same image, we can find the grain size. This is grain. This is one grain. This is hexagonal. This is zinc oxide. Then, uh, these are hexagonal grains. We can find the diameter or thickness or length or width of the grains uh, using the scale in the uh, at the bottom. Uh, this is 200 nanometer. Therefore, we can place this 200 nanometer here. The, it may be uh, 300. This uh, diameter of this grain may be 300. Uh, this may be around 200. The, this, these are grains. Each and every grain consists of several crystallites. Crystallites are subsets of uh, grains. Crystallite size generally falls uh, in the range of uh, uh, 20, 30 nanometers. But grain size is 200 or 300 nanometers, maybe 200 or 300 nanometers. Therefore, gray, uh, sometimes they called the grains as particles. In some, some researchers, in some papers, they call the grains as particles. When they are in powder form, they call it as particles. Therefore, particles and the grains are almost the same. And the, the, the terms are alternatively used for the same thing, same entity. And the crystallites are subsets of a grain. Clear? Yes, sir. Uh, we can calculate the crystallite size using the formula. We can observe, we can observe the size of the grain using some or uh, AFM. Uh, atomic force microscopy images. From the same images, we can uh, find out the size of the grains. From Scherer formula using X-ray diffraction technique, we can calculate the crystallite size. Crystallite and grains are different entities, two different entities. Any other question? Okay. We have covered all the questions so far. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. All the questions in chat box as well as in uh, the boxes. Okay, once again, I thank the authorities, the organizing committee, the head of the Department of uh, Science and Humanities, and uh, especially the convener, Mr. A. Ubaidullah Beg, Assistant Professor of Physics, uh, for having given me this opportunity. And I also thank all the participants who patiently listen. Uh, my lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your informative speech. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Shall I, I think I think the young research birds can utilize this uh, opportunity for their future research work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All are okay, uh, all participants are welcome to uh, AVVM Sri Pushpam College Material Science Laboratory. Uh, we are there for you. Uh, to help the uh, budding researchers, young researchers. Uh, even we uh, deposit uh, thimbles for you uh, at free of cost, at free of cost. Therefore, uh, come to Tanjavur and utilize our facilities. We have spray pyrolysis unit, chemical bath unit, spin coating unit, uh, and for characterization, we have scanning electron microscope and uh, UV visible spectrophotometer and the photocatalytic uh, dating relation apparatus. Uh, you can come and utilize these facilities, research facilities in our lab. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay. So now uh, I will call upon our department colleague, Dr. S. Vadivel, to propose the vote of thanks. Sir, over to you, sir. Vadivel, sir. What you sir? Are you here, sir?
वडिवेल सर ओके सर यू कैन फॉर द वॉट ऑफ थिंग्स मे बी सम कनेक्टिविटी प्रॉब्लम यस यस आई थिंक but you sir you can propose the vote of thanks i think he has some connectivity problem wait a minute hello sir sir okay sir then you have vote of thanks propose so we will post the feedback link to this whatsapp group as well as in youtube you can fill this and also we will post the feedback link in the whatsapp group also so you can utilize that to get the e certificate so i will propose a vote of thanks sir thank okay. you thank you very much sir for your informative and uh, interesting speech for the young research birders definitely if they can utilize this opportunity in your college they will come there and they can utilize this opportunity uh, first of all i would thank our chief guest who has accepted this uh, instant acceptance without any hesitations and also in his busy schedule so i thank you sir thank you thank you secondly i thank our management and also our hod correspondent giving this zoom platform as well as the youtube platform with uninterrupted signals we can able to make this program a grand success and next i would thank our department colleagues dr s vadivel abubakar dr s abubakar and dr d lakshmanan who are utilizing this opportunities and making this program a grand success and also i want to thank our hod dr abdul is abdul wahid so from the beginning he is giving lot of instructions as well as suggestions to make this program a success finally i want to thank dr nishad ahmed so who is a professor of our college from mca department so without this platform we cannot able to achieve this this grand success i also like to thank our nishad ahmed also for his contribution in this program thank you one and all thank you sir thank you much thank you sir thank you sir. so we will post the feedback uh, kindly enter the feedback shall i leave sir okay sir you can leave sir okay thank you thank you sir साइंटिस्ट <laughs> Dr. T. Sundaramurthy will give a lecture on what are the opportunities present in the space and also in the ISRO section. So kindly join tomorrow at three to four thirty. We will provide the uh, registration link in chat box also.
ओके थैंक यू मा निशान सर निशान सर participants you can forward the link for tomorrow's program to your colleagues so so that you can join at 3 to 4:30 pm like i am प्रोग्राम ओके सर मैं रेस्टिक कर सर एक मैं आपको रेस्टिक कर मैक्सिमम लेवन फिफ्टी के अंदर खत्म करना होगा ऐसे ही ना पता बोल लोग जाएंगे अभी वर्क को रखें ना 
Thank you. 